Okay, so this is a test review for people that need to retake the test on Monday after school. Remember, the retakes, the retakes are going to be Monday after school. And when you come to class after school, you must have this paper. And I prefer if you have a green and purple foldable. Um, however, if you don't, then you must have had this paper completely finished from this video. And any problems that you have a question on, I want you to circle it so then you can ask me in tutorials. If you do not have any questions, then you could just start the retakes after school on Monday. Um, so it says, which equation is equivalent to this equation here? So if you notice, it's in a weird form. We talked about forms like this. And the, the best form to get it in is to get it in slope-intercept form. In slope-intercept form, you have to recognize that right now, the x and the y are already on opposite sides of the the equal sign. So in this case, you do not have to move the x because the x is already on the opposite side. All you have to do is get this coefficient away from this y by dividing everything by 3. So then you're going to use your calculator to try to figure out, um, well, 3 divided by 3, that gives us a 1y. 2 divided by 3, it will give you a decimal. But in most cases, since it's repeating like that, we want to change it back to a fraction with math enter enter. So we're keeping 2 over 3 with the x. Notice I did not put the x in the calculator when I was trying to figure it out. And then 27 divided by 3 is 9. And in this case, it just tells us that my slope is 2 over 3 and my y-intercept is 9. So this is the equation that is equivalent to the, to the um, beginning equation. Number two says, what is the equation in standard form of the line that passes through the points negative 2, 10, and 2, 30? Okay. My suggestion, since you are retaking the test, my suggestion is to use StatEdit to help you write um, point slope, I'm sorry, not point slope form, but we talked about it today in class. StatEdit helps you put it in slope-intercept form. It says it right here on the paper. I don't know, I'm just kind of talking too fast and not thinking enough. So stat edit, go over to calc, helps me write it in slope-intercept form. It tells me that my slope, which is the A, so that's Y equals 5X plus 20. This is my slope-intercept form. Notice it says find the slope first and write it here. The slope is 5. Okay. Now it says convert it to standard form. Because remember, the calculator will always, can always give you slope-intercept form. But what if your answer choices are all in standard? That's when you have to recognize that slope-intercept form, the x and the y are on opposite sides of the equal. But with standard form, you have to notice that the x and the y are now on the same side of the equals. You see your x is here, whatever coefficient, and the y is on the same side of the equals. So you have to know what to do. If I want to take this whole x term and move it to the other side of the equals, I got to do the opposite. Right now it's a positive 5. I got to do the opposite to move it over here. So it's going to be a negative 5x plus y equals. I didn't do anything to that. So that stays as a 20. And it's a positive 20, so I keep it as a positive 20. So this is standard form. Um, the only hiccup with the standard form is you're not supposed to have a negative x value. So they could write it like this, or they could flip all the signs and now say, okay, that's positive 5x, that's negative y, or minus y, and now the 20 is a negative 20. So either one of these could be correct for standard form. This one says, what is the solution to this equation right here? Now notice this one, it has parentheses and it only has one variable. So this is the case where I need to first distribute to get rid of my parentheses. So I got 0.3 times 15x, but don't put the x in there. That gives me 4.5x. And then, so I'm multiplying this times this and now 0.3 times 5. 0.3 times 5, and everything's positive, so I don't have to worry about nothing there. So that's what this side becomes when I distribute. Now this side i got to distribute again. So 0.5 times 20, 0.5 times 20, don't put the x when you're trying to calculate it here. 
So that's 10, but now you got to put the x when you write it. And then 0.5 times a, what do you think, is that a 22? Not really, it's a negative 22. So 0.5 times negative 22, negative 11. So now what I'm trying to think is, I just distributed, now I'm looking for like terms. I see like terms here, like times, terms here. They're on opposite sides of the equal, so I got to do the opposite to move it over here. So now I can combine it. So 4.5 plus negative 10. So that gives me negative 5.5. Bring down that. Bring down that. That was not 11. That was a negative 11. Uh-oh, wait a minute. I also forgot something here. That should have had an X with it. I see that mistake happen a lot. Please don't, do, don't make that mistake. Now that the X's are all over here, I got to do the opposite of this so I can start isolating the X variable. So that's negative 5.5 X. I'm just bringing that one down. Now I got to add those two. Negative 11 plus negative 1.5, and that's a negative 12.5. And now I'm finally at the end. I only got one term here and one term here. I can take this term, negative 12.5, and divide it by negative 5.5. Yes, when you divide, you keep the same sign. Divide by negative 5.5, so x equals 2.272727. Okay, so let's just... 2.27 as a decimal. If I math enter, enter it, I'm getting 25 over 11. So like I said before, if you have questions about any of these, just put a big circle around whatever you have a question and then you can ask me when you come to tutorials on Monday after school. Number five says the graph of a linear function is shown on the grid. Which equation is best represented by the graph? It kind of walks you through the steps. It says find two points to help write the slope. You see, they give you a whole bunch of perfect points here. I'm just going to find two of them. Then once again, once I find two points, stat edit will help me write it in slope intercept form. So I'm going to use this one. Notice, is it one, two, three, four? Nope, that's a five. So that's five comma 40. And then that's 10, 20, 40, 60, 10, 60. I'm going to use that edit again, changing this to 5, 40, 10, 60, and then stat over to calc. Remember, stat edit helps you write an equation only in slope-intercept form. However, remember, your multiple choice answers may not be in slope-intercept form, so you have to know how to convert it. So here's slope intercept form. This is my slope. Now once again, convert it to standard form. So standard form means I got to get take this x term, do the opposite so I can move it over here. So I'm going to do it right here. I got y equals 4x plus 20. I'm doing the opposite of 4x over here. So now it's a negative 4x plus y equals 20. I didn't even touch the 20. The 20 just stayed there. But remember, you can't have a negative x term, so if you just change all the signs, either way it could look like either one of these. It could look like this or like this for your standard form equation. These ones here talk about perpendicular and parallel slopes. So you have to be able to look at this equation and first identify the slope. And if you're looking here, this is point slope form. Here's my slope. The slope is negative 2 over 5. Perpendicular means flip and switch. Remember we talked about perpendicular means flip and switch. Flip and switch. Flip and switch. So first you flip the fraction. So maybe we should write that. Flip the fraction. And what do you switch? Switch the sign. If it's negative here, that means it should be positive and good. I have a perpendicular. For perpendicular, you flip and switch. Remember, parallel line tab, the same slope. So what is the slope? 
negative 2 over 5. What do we use for parallel? The same slope. So it should be negative 2 over 5 for our same slope for parallel. If you're looking here, this is standard form. Remember, it's kind of stupid. So we got to do some rearranging. We got to do some converting so we can find the slope. Because right now, we don't know what it is. This is something we've been doing for a long time. If you don't understand what I'm doing here, circle it and ask when you come to tutoring on Monday. So what I'm looking at here is I'm, this is going to be y equals, this will become a negative 5, and then negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. So we got y equals negative 5. So the slope is negative 2. For perpendicular, you flip and switch. So if we have a negative 2, we got to flip it. That makes it a 1 over 2, and then switch the sign. It was negative, now it's positive. Now I know perpendicular slope. For parallel lines, you... No, for parallel, same slope. Parallel lines have what? The same slope. So I'm keeping it exactly the same. Now this one, it looks the same. Oh, no, it's not the same. You see how the 8, there's a 4. So let's go ahead and do our same steps. Opposite of x to the other side. Now I divide everything by 8, divide by 8, divide by 8. So I got y equals, ooh, negative 20 over 8. I don't know what that is. Negative 20 divided by 8. Use my calculator. Negative 2.5. And then negative 4 over 8. I got to math enter, enter that when I get plus 1 over 2x. So the slope right now is positive 1 over 2, but do we use no, perpendicular, you flip and switch. So flipping a 1 over 2, that gives us a 2 over 1. Then we switch the positive to a negative. So that just is negative 2. Because the 1 is invisible. And for parallel lines, have what? The same slope. If you were in class, you know why I'm saying it like that. Okay. Now... One of the other sections was solving equations, just solving for x. Here we're just solving for x or solving for p or q, whatever it is. We're not converting, we're only solving. So first step, well notice there's like terms. We got to combine those. So that would be 20 equals, combine those like terms, 2, so we're combining. So we're at 2 plus, what kind of 4? Negative 4. So that's a negative 2x, then bring down the negative 8. That's the first step, combining the like terms. I'll draw my line and the equal sign right there. Second step is now we want to isolate this x. So I want to add 8 over here. So I'm getting 28 equals negative 2x. Because remember, I want to get the x by itself. Third step is divide both sides by negative 2. So then my answer is just x equals, and yeah, the x is over here, 28 divided by negative 2, and that's negative 14. That's my answer. Remember, there was some on the test that you had to solve out, but some only asked for the first step. So that's why I broke it down in the boxes. So this one here, notice I have x here and then x on the other side of the equal. You ready to get this party started? Yeah. So then you have to do the opposite of 8x. I'll be there in just a minute. No, that's okay. The opposite of the 8x, which is negative 8x. So my first step would be negative 17. This will end up being, uh, if I do 7 plus a negative 8, that's negative 1x. That cancels out. And be careful because this 22 is negative 22. Be careful. I almost crossed it out when I was circling. So now I'm trying to get the x by itself. Um, add 17 over here. So I have a negative 1x equals, let's figure out what negative 22 plus 17 is, negative 5. So we got negative 5. Now the last step, divide both sides by negative 1. x equals negative divided by a negative. Remember Dorito Man. I think that's how Dorito Man looks. I don't know. Maybe if it's wrong, let me know. And then we got equals, x equals 5. All right, one more thing here. Same thing, same way we solved here, but now they just put a B, and look, there's an inequality. So 
Um, there's no like terms. There's no parentheses. We just simply need to get this B by itself. Add 15 over here. So that's negative 7B is greater than negative 22 plus 15 is negative 7. <clears throat> so just remember, the bright idea here to remember is when you divide by a negative, this symbol now changes. Solution is B is less than 1. You plot your 1. I use an open circle because it's not uh, equal to. And less than is to the left. Less than. All right? And the last one I'm going to do quickly. If you have questions about it, please ask me when you come to tutoring. Three x, thirty nine, three x. Oh, there's no more x's. So these two get added together because these both do not have x's. Thirty nine plus four, forty three, forty three. Now I move my x. Oh, x's are on the um, yeah different sides. So I gotta do the opposite. So that's fifteen x. And I have a forty three. Divide by 15, divide by 15. Uh oh, 43 divided by 15, that's going to be a decimal. Where? So x is greater than or equal to 2.87, we'll call it. So 2.87. Now I close my circle in. Why? Because there's an equal to. Close the circle in because there's an equal to. And this is greater than or equal. All right, and that's the end of this video. You need to have this paper complete and it needs to come with you when you come to tutoring on Monday after school.